Welcome to part two of painting a space marine in the salamander chapter scheme. Uh, name is Butta Eggs, and welcome. Um, so shout out to the Discord for correcting me. There's a reaver. Part one, I believe I said intercessor, so my bad. Uh, this is the paintless, GW products, P3 products, AK, Tamiya, and testers. So getting right into it, we're going to be grabbing some Thamar Black from P3. Going to be painting all them webbings uh, underneath that chest piece, underneath the armpits, back of the knees, back of the heel. Um, I like this color. It's a nice, um, solid, opaque black. Pretty much a one coat and you're done uh, job. Uh, <clears throat> One of the keys of, of that I've found that uh, painting it in like tight spots is to have the model move. So you manipulating the model instead of you manipulating your brush trying to reach it. So if there's a, a way that you can move the model to get into that hard reach spot, just do it. So like here I have the marine upside down so I can get the armpits because that would have been one hell of a time trying to have the model upright and try and get my brush down and up into the armpit. So here I'm using a uh, Minoth white highlight P3. I, it, it's a kind of like a cream white, horrible coverage. I had to do like two or three coverage, uh, yeah, two or three coats of this. Then again, any white is pretty hard to paint. Um, and then for the seal, I went ahead and used a uh, Sanguin a base from P3 and then going over the top of the white with uh, was it skeleton horde contrast from GW the only reason to use contrast paints instead of washes um, then all the metallic bits I'm painting um, lead belcher for the I don't know if you want to call that like a dagger a knife or a sword <laughs> and then underneath the bolt pistol the clip, the barrel, painting that lead belcher as well. This is very satisfying. Primed, boom, painted. So good. <laughs> this is so satisfying to watch. <laughs> so yeah, just taking it slow. Hitting that. Then we're going to be coming in with P3's um, Molten Bronze for all the gold trim here in a minute. And then here we go, hitting the trim, the belt buckle, the little skull emblem uh, right there with uh, P3's Molten Bronze. A little dab and then hitting this uh the knife sheath that little gold bit right there or not gold but bronze bit looking pretty good <laughs> i forgot to paint the grenade <laughs> hitting the two smoke grenades on its chest <laughs> and i forgot to paint the belt but don't worry movie magic and then right here i'm gonna be painting that with um what is it rhinoxide from GW there it is painted and edge highlighted with steel legion drab kind of my my personal favorite one-two punch when it comes to like pouches backpacks belts stuff like that and then I highlighted the black with um, a ministratum gray from GW Give it a once over. Looking good. Feeling good. Painted the hilt. Also, that uh, molten bronze from P3. And then we're going to be using those two colors right there to highlight uh, the, the parchment and the seal. And then you're, you're thinking to yourself, what just happened? Well, I'll tell you, my friend. Magic. Magic 
happened. Uh, so what I did was I ran um, AK Interactive Streaking Grime through my airbrush and gave it a good coat. Um, we're going to be using a reductive painting technique. Uh, I've been curious about the grim dark world of painting in Zetsagoon Miniatures has a great uh, tutorial about it on his website. And so with the reductive painting technique is what you're going to be doing is you're going to be removing that enamel wash or yeah, it's an enamel wash. Uh, so I'm going to be using a dauber, a Q-tip, a pipette, this uh, enamel thinner. So please make sure you have a cup or a container or something like that. Don't put it in a wet palette. Um, make sure you're in a ventilated area. You have a respirator because this stuff hits harder than a mule. Um, so here I go. Open it up carefully. One hand on it at all times because we don't want to spill this. And then we suck some up and we put it in. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Get the rest of it on my towel. One hand on it at all times, putting it in. I'm probably being overly cautious, but I don't want this going all over my workspace because that would suck. So we're all good. Zoomed in. Got my Q-tips now with the dauber. We're going to go ahead and saturate it. Right? Work most of it off, slapping it on the paper towel, get most of it off, and this is magic. Just a pow, pow, a pow. I'm doing lightly dabbing motion on it. Um, the reason for that is that it's enamel and acrylic paints do not work together. They're uh, one's oil, one's water based. So. We're not going to have any problems with it peeling, but I will show a little bit later on in the video what happens um, when you do not get good coverage on your acrylic paints or your acrylic uh, primer uh, base. Um, so right now I'm just slightly wiping it away, exposing that beautiful green that we had, that gold, um, making sure that that streaking grime gets in the recesses to really set off the mood of like, this dude has been like through some nasty stuff, um, doing doing the emperor's work, and you just slowly work it. Um, there's I I've yet to see um, anybody go too far with it because this this. This is magical juice for models, I swear. Um, you, the, the more you put on, the more you can take off, or the less you can take off, and it's just it just looks good. Um, it's like borderline easy mode. Um, so just, you know, working the, the highest points of the model, you know, just wiping it away from the, the chest plate, the emblem... The, the grenades and letting that enamel thinner reactivate the uh, streak and grime and let it flow in those recesses. Um, I mean, dare I say it, it's better than Nuln Oil. Um, <laughs> so here I'm going in with Big Daddy Dauber, getting it saturated, letting it reactivate and kind of start flowing naturally into those recesses and exposing the, the high points so that it can go into the low points. And then here I am just, you know, beating it like a drum, trying not to do any scraping motions and stuff like that. Um, I will say that using these, uh, these tools, you will have little hairs um, afterwards, but that's okay. You just go in, you know, with... Uh, a paintbrush or um, a uh, tweezers and just pull them off it's all good uh, then you're going to like to simulate like scuffing and motion I guess um, take a q-tip and run it uh, 
run it along the edge to kind of simulate wear and tear. And of course I have it out of shot. So, <laughs> oh, there was, huzzah. <laughs> so you can kind of see how that the streak and grime kind of sits right up there in the recess and all the edge, um, not edge, but the high, high points are um, looking pretty good. It's like edge highlighting without edge highlighting. It's great stuff. See, you can see some of the fibers from the Q-tips and the dauber sitting there. It's, it's part of the process. I mean, I can't find any Q-tips that are going to keep the fibers together. It's, and if, if anybody does know, leave it in the comments because I would love to get some. Um, but for now, I'm just going to use my Walmart brand <laughs> Q-tips. And see how it, it just, you know, pulls away from those high points and just wants to find a crevice t to go hide in. Yeah, there we go. See, this is this is the point where I rubbed too hard on that left knee. I scraped it all the way down to the plastic. Um, I think, yeah, there's going to be a shot of the mistake and I've got a workaround to fix it and then here I am you know just slowly pulling off those hairs with uh, my paintbrush no big deal it's a little bit time-consuming but I think the effect that you'll see at the end is well worth it um, and then we're going in on the trim doing the most high points of it Yeah, you can start to see that I was way too rough right there. Pulled it right off. I was way too rough. Um, so how that happened was that I didn't have a good enough coverage on that knee. Meaning that somewhere on that kneecap, there was like a spot to where the uh, enamel thinner was able to get down underneath that acrylic layer and rise up it's not the the fact that the the enamel thinner damaged the acrylic it was because i didn't lay a solid foundation to where that wouldn't have happened um so when you're working with the enamels and the acrylics uh make sure that you lay down a solid smooth consistent evenly spaced foundation you know make sure that thing is sealed off i mean you can go do a um a solid coat of acrylic paints you know make sure it's all um well, what's the word i'm looking for uh make sure that it's evenly uh painted on and then go over the enamels and it won't have any problems so a lot of people will say that it'll you know the enamel is going to interact with the acrylic that is simply not the case it's human error and not laying down your smooth coats letting it dry and then moving on to the next step should you varnish afterwards you know going from acrylic to enamel i do i mean you don't have to but that's just me um like i think that if i would have varnished a little like i mean Maybe I didn't put enough varnish on that kneecap and, and that could have prevented it, this all from happening was just that that was a weak point. And then here I am being like, ah, oh, son of a monkey. I done it. And then coming in, doing a little bit of edge highlighting without the lead belcher paint. I'm just going in 
with the enamel thinner, taking off most of it and just working that that edge of the uh, the sword dagger knife thing. <laughs> So how we're gonna fix this problem is that I'm going to use a sponge and use um, lead belcher and use a chipping technique and just, you know, dab around the the blue that's showing through and that's, that's gonna hide it fine. Um, no reason to go about um, repainting or anything like that. I mean, if, if you have bare plastic like that, I just find it super easy to just get some chipping medium or something like that or use the sponge technique and just chip around the exposed area uh, right here i'm going to be using tamiya black panel liner and i'm just going to drop it in uh in and around the uh shoulder pauldron um, i used it around uh, the bottom of the feet any of the joints um just to to reinforce um the the detail of it all especially right there kind of kind of recover the, the the horrible damage that i did And that is a grimdark Sally. That's what I like to call salamanders. <laughs> Little Sallies running across the game board, catching stuff on fire. <laughs> but yeah, um, with this model, I learned a lot. Um, I made a lot of mistakes on this, uh, but I adapted and uh, overcame. Um, I really enjoyed this one. Um, I'm thinking about doing maybe an ultramarine, an imperial fist, um, maybe some of the other skittle boys. Um, yeah, I just, he really looked awesome. Um, painting the helmet, uh, I'll probably cover in a future video. Um, doing the, uh, that like skull effect. Um, and then plus maybe do an in-depth video of like some OSLs because I did some OSL for the backpack and the eyes. Well, with that, I do appreciate you guys watching. Uh, leave a like and a comment. And if I uh, tickled the funny bone, maybe subscribe. Hello. Thank you for dropping by for part two of Space Marine Painting. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> That was bad. <laughs> oh, shit. Thank you for dropping by the fucking... I just can't do it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, damn. This is like the fourth take. <clears throat> Thank you for stopping by and watching. <laughs> Fuck. Jesus.